What I want to do is just look at fossils. They asked me to speak on human evolution. The only actual hard evidence we have is the fossils. Now, an after-the-fact scene of the crime scene evidence would be the DNA evidence. But that's all gone the creation way, too. What we don't have in the fossil record is, and it's, it's systematic, it's obvious by its absence. We have lots and lots of extinct chimpanzee, gorilla, orang, and human fossils, but according to evolution, we did not come from the monkeys, they are not our grandparents, they are our cousins, our modern day cousins, from a common grandfather, common great grandfather, great great grandfather, and great 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 grandfather, and so they are our cousins. There was this monkey looking thing, and some of them turned into us, and some of them turned into chimpanzees. But on the way, they got very chimp-like looking, and we got a lot of fossils of those. They got very human-like looking, and we got lots of fossils of those. And I'm not kidding you, I'm going to show you this. It's right here where evolution does its magic part of the story that there's nothing to document that that part of the chart ever happened. Notice, I want you to notice the features on this, uh, uh, this mock-up. Uh, notice the ears, which you can't tell from the skull. The hair, the hairline, which you can't tell from the skull. The skin texture and tone, the lips, even parts of the nose. Uh, certainly the body hair. Uh, you can't tell any of that from, now you can tell the brow ridges. Uh, Depending on how much of the skull you find, you can tell the shape of the skull itself and the teeth. Uh, you can tell some of the musculature from the little pits in the bones where the muscles attach um, by uh, tendons. Now, here's another thing. Every time they make one of these little mock-ups, they always draw the sclera or the whites of the eyes. Monkeys' eyelids are different from ours. You cannot see the whites of their eyes. Even animals like a cow or a horse, you know, if, if you're messing with the horse back there, uh, maybe if they turn their head and roll their eye really far, you'll see the whites of their eyes. That's when you know they're really worried about something. Uh, but human eyes look like this. You cannot tell the eyelids. They always make these eyes look human and not monkey. They do everything they can to make it look as human as possible. In 1998, Berger got in National Geographic. This was before uh, um, uh, uh, Australopithecus sediba. And it was the Australopithecus africanus fossil. And National Geographic uh, realized they had to redraw the family tree because something was wrong with Australopithecus africanus. Uh, there's Australopithecus uh, afarensis, which is Lucy. How many have heard of the Lucy fossil? Lucy, okay. And after that, a million years later in the story, because it's higher up enough in the fossil strata and the rock layers that evolutionists, by their reckoning, would say it came a million years later. Um, that's the next one up is Australopithecus africanus. take a look at what they say next. A closer look, a closer look, a closer look at the available fossils in 1998 reveals Africanus may have had longer arms and shorter legs than Lucy. Limbs that were more chimp-like than Afarensis. Okay, this is backwards from their story. If so, the implications are striking. Not if you're a creationist. Only for an evolutionist is this striking. One possibility is that hominids underwent an evolutionary reversal between Afarensis and Africanus. Okay, here's what happens. They find a monkey-like looking thing that is, is touted since 1974 as the missing link. And a million years later in the, in the rocks, by their reckoning, they find another fossil that instead of becoming more human-like, it looks more like a monkey than Lucy.
They found exactly the opposite of what their theory said they should find, and it did not bother them. I feel like silly rabbit, tricks are for kids, you know. Silly creationists, science is for evolution. Silly creationists, evolution just went backwards for a million years. Here's a problem, because in 2005, they said Australopithecus afarensis almost certainly did not walk like us. Uh, no arched foot, the navicular bones were probably from a Homo habilis. Uh, it's like an ape, it's flat-footed. These were guys, two guys from the American Museum of Natural History and from Western Michigan University at the American Association of Physical Anthropologists saying this. In Scientific American. It's not the creationist Sunday School Journal. Um, so it had already been determined that Lucy, the afarensis, did not walk like us because of those toe bones. Uh, and uh, now they're saying it, it uh, walked like us. Similar, Lucy is relegated to a side branch on the family tree, says the New York Times in uh, 2008. Uh, and a lot of this is because Africanus and Afarensis uh, uh, have a revolutionary reversal. Uh, Afarensis almost certainly did not walk like us, says Scientific American in 2005, but walking upright was one of the big dramas about, ooh, Australopithecus Lucy walked upright like us. Uh, Lucy's been dropped by some researchers in evolution community even as nothing but a dead monkey. Of course, I would believe that um, these were dead monkeys and people that drowned during Noah's flood, for the most part, or maybe drowned in their little cave during a flash flood or something. Maybe that's what the Naledi fossils are. Homo neanderthalensis has now been reclassified in all of the, uh, the, the newer uh, cl uh, classification books and magazines and research paper articles and museums as Homo sapiens. We're Homo sapiens variety sapiens. They're Homo sapiens variety uh, Neanderthalensis. So we're both Homo sapiens now. Uh, Homo heidelbergensis, Heidelberg man, is now classified as Homo sapiens. How many ever heard of Cro-Magnon? Yep, that's Homo sapiens now. Strike three! You're out! Now, you were asking about Neanderthals and blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, this is one of the things here. Um, have you ever noticed that in most evolutionary films, the primitive humans are less intelligent than the animals? Yeah, uh, the humans in Ice Age couldn't talk, uh, but the saber-toothed tiger and the little weasel guy and, you know, the mastodon, they could talk. Okay.